show you how to integrate or find the integral of expressions like these ones here. It's helpful to think of integration here as the reverse process of differentiation. So instead of decreasing the power by one, we're going to increase the power by one. And instead of multiplying by this power, we're going to divide by the new power, okay? So it will become a bit easier when we look at these questions here. So in the first one, we have to find the integral of 12x to the power of five with respect to x. Okay, so remember I said we have to increase this power by one. Okay, so instead of having x to the power of five, we're going to have x to the power of six, okay? Then we have to divide by the new power. Okay, so we have the number 12 here, and we have to divide by the new power, which I wrote down, six. We also have to remember to add a constant. I'm going to call it c. Okay, remember when we were differentiating, whenever you differentiate a constant, so a number that doesn't change, 4, 7, or negative 2, when we differentiate it, it goes to 0. Okay, so when we integrate, we have to remember to add a constant. There isn't a way of working out what this constant actually is in this question, as we don't have enough information, but you must remember to write down plus c. Okay, so the last step is to simplify. Okay, 12 divided by 6 is 2, so the answer is 2x to the power of 6 plus c. Okay, and there is the integral. In the next example, we have to find the integral of 3x to the minus 2 plus 2x plus 1 with respect to x. So all that's different in this one is that there are several terms in the expression here that we need to integrate separately, okay? So remember, we're raising the power of x by one and we're dividing by the new power. So if we take the first term here and we add one to this power, negative two plus one is negative one, so we would have x to the power of negative one. Don't forget to divide this number here, three, by the new power, so three divided by negative one. Okay, so there's the first term. Then if we look at this part here, plus 2x, remember that this is the same thing as 2x to the power of 1. Okay, we just don't usually write down that power of 1. So if we raise that power by 1, we would end up with x squared. And not forgetting to divide this number here, so positive 2 by the new power, which happens to be positive 2. Okay? Now if we look at the final part here, plus 1, when you look for the power of x, you can see there isn't the letter x with a power, okay? It's helpful just at the beginning when you're getting to grips with the integration to remember that this could also be written as plus 1 multiplied by x to the power of 0, okay? We don't usually write it like this. Remember, anything raised to the power of 0 is equal to the number 1. So 1 multiplied by 1 is 1, okay? Which is why we don't usually write it down. But just consider it written like this, so that when you raise the power of x, it's a bit more obvious, okay? So this, if we add 1 to 0, becomes 1, so it would be x to the power of 1. And then you would divide this number 1 by the new power, which is 1, okay? Not forgetting at the end to add your constant c. So the last step in this question is to simplify to get full marks. So 3 divided by negative 1 is negative 3. So we have negative 3x to the power of negative 1. Here, 2 divided by itself is just 1, so we have 1x squared. Here, 1 divided by itself is 1, so we'd have plus x, and then plus c. Okay, a useful way just to check your answers when you're doing these to start with is remember that integration is the reverse process of differentiation. So if you differentiate your answer here, it should take you back to what you started with, okay? So if I differentiate x squared, I get 2x, which is correct, okay? If I differentiate 1x, I should get 1 which is correct, okay? In this final question, we have to find the integral of 4x cubed plus 4x squared minus x plus two with respect to x. So just like before, we're going to integrate each term one by one, okay? So if I raise the power here by one, I have x to the power of four. And if I divide this number here, 
by the new power and dividing it by four. Okay, onto the next term. If I raise this power by one, I get x cubed. And then remember, you're taking this number here, positive four, and you're dividing by the new power, which is three. Okay, here we have negative x, which is the same thing as negative one x. And remember, the power on the x is positive one. So if I raise this power by 1, I would get x squared. And you're taking this number here, so negative 1, and dividing it by the new power, which is 2. Okay? Remember, just like before, plus 2 is the same thing as plus 2x to the 0. Okay? So if you raise this power by 1, you would get x to the 1. And you're dividing this number here, 2, by the new power, which is 1. Not forgetting to add C, your constant, at the end. Okay, so let's just simplify this. So 4 divided by 4 is just 1. So we have 1x to the power of 4. Here we have 4 thirds, which can't be simplified. So I'm just going to leave it as 4 thirds x cubed. Then we have negative a half x squared, and then 2 divided by 1 is just 2, so we have 2x plus c. So there is the answer. I just want to take you back to the x to the power of 0 part. Once you've done a few of these, you might find it a bit tedious writing this out every time. Just remember that if you're integrating a constant, the quick way of remembering this is just to stick an x next to it. Okay, so if you're integrating 1, you would get 1x. If you're integrating 2, you get 2x. If you're integrating negative 5, you would get negative 5x. I hope that makes sense. The more practice you can do, the better.